name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather celebrating this third Sunday of the Easter season, we continue to proclaim Alleluia, He is risen. These Easter days, with the Word of God and the celebration of the sacraments, remind us that Lord, the Lord is with us. The Lord Jesus Christ is risen. We rejoice in His blessings and the joy that He brings to each of our days. Even as we continue to face great challenges, Christ is with us. Let us, as always, acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> pray.
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man condemned to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God. You killed using lawless men to crucify him, but God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill with me joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus of this we are all witnesses. Exalted in the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. my 
heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faith for one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. A reading from the letter from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your soldiering, realizing that you were ransomed from your fruitile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ. As of a spotless, um, unblemished lamb, he was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. They were conversing about all the things that had occurred. It happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? 
They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sense a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this third Sunday of Easter, the Collect Prayer, the opening prayer of the Mass, speaks of a renewed youthfulness of spirit. That phrase from the opening prayer really captured my attention because it speaks so beautifully of the journey of our Catholic faith for each of us. We belong to the most ancient human institution that exists in the world. 2,000 years of proclaiming He is risen. Many see the Catholic Church as ancient, out of date, out of touch, but those beautiful words from the opening prayer remind us of what we've all probably heard before in other settings, that the church is ever ancient, ever new. 
The church is ancient, and as any ancient institution has gone through its challenges, as she does today, but the church is ever new as well. And in this Easter season, it's true for every aspect of the church, and each of us as individual disciples, to seek that renewed youthfulness of spirit that that opening prayer speaks of. In these days, I know we've all spent a lot of time online looking at images, reading emails, visiting different websites, watching videos. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of online, but that's where we are right now. It is a blessing, and we need to remember that. But some of the blessings of this opportunity of seeing so much online, one of the things that I've seen is, is several images of Christ at various stages in his life that I find to be very beautiful. One that I saw this week as St. Joseph holding Jesus. He looks like about a two-year-old just getting steady on his feet, dressed like a little rabbi. A beautiful image. And as we think of the church ever ancient, ever new, as we speak of a renewed youthfulness of spirit, I think that's a beautiful reminder for me that I share. Hopefully it's inspiring to you as well. Think of Jesus Christ as a newborn child, as we often do at Christmas, but then let him grow up. Let him be a two-year-old, a five-year-old. Maybe you have children in your own family or grandchildren that are at different ages. Imagine Christ at nine. We get that glimpse of him at 12. Imagine him as a teenager and then celebrating his 21st birthday as a 20-something and then into his 30s as he begins his mission. Christ was young when he entered into his mission, only 30 years old. And all of his youth had been hidden, but preparing for that mission of love that we celebrate during this Easter season. A love that grew to the point where he was strong enough to suffer, die, and rise for us all. So that renewed youthfulness of spirit, I find in Christ himself, I find in the life of of this ancient institution that is so much more than an institution. It is a family. It is the body of Christ. It is a gathering of disciples. So many beautiful descriptions of the church remind us that she is ever new, ever young, even with ancient truths that guide us. And then we can turn as we must, to this beautiful gospel of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. This is probably a favorite gospel for many of us, and there's good reason for that, because it offers us our life, our journey, our discipleship. In this version that we hear from Luke, The disciples are nameless, simply the two. I think there's a wisdom in that, because we can more easily place ourselves on the road to Emmaus. We share their downcast spirits in many ways as we journey through this confusing time. But we hopefully also share what the end of this gospel passage reminds us of, 
that in the breaking of the bread, we know him. This beautiful story of Emmaus is our story, and we all need to embrace it, to recognize ourselves in this story. As they are downcast, look how long it takes them to see Jesus. He's taking them through Moses and all the prophets, explaining how even the Old Testament is about the light of Christ, a light that is growing among the chosen people, the people of Israel, in that marvelous story of their journey from death to life, from sin to virtue. It is our story, our journey as well. And interestingly, these two disciples, as they later say, their hearts were burning as he spoke of Moses and the prophets and interpreted the scriptures in his own light. But they still didn't recognize him then. They recognized him only at the point of the breaking of the bread. Our greatest recognition as well, the Eucharist, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Him, Jesus, the one they were walking with. And once again, the story speaks to our discipleship as well. And I'd encourage us all to ponder that in the coming week. Because like these disciples, Christ is walking with us, but so often we don't recognize him. I can speak for myself, and I believe I speak for all of us. If we're serious about discipleship, if we love the Lord, if we are seeking to follow him, there are many moments, even in prayer, even at times in prayer before him in the Eucharist, as he is in the tabernacle or exposed in a monstrance, even then we can find ourselves distracted, downcast, frustrated, not recognizing his presence. I can imagine that many of the faithful think of priests like Father Hank or bishops like myself or the deacons, we who are called to live out holy orders, you probably think, oh, they have a special gift. They, there's something special that happens for them. Well, I can say that there are special moments, but I would imagine Father Hank would agree there, there are a lot of not-so-special moments as well, where it is simply continuing to walk, not recognizing the Lord, not having a moment of great prayerful insight, but continuing to be faithful, continuing to walk the journey. That's what these two offer us as an image as they walk to Emmaus. They continue the journey. Yes, their hearts are burning, as often ours are, whether bishop, priest, deacon, or lay faithful, religious, wherever we find ourselves, in the body of Christ, in this beautiful family called the Catholic Church. The Lord is with us, and thank God, thank God for His blessings, that at times, like these two, we get a glimpse of Him. Notice what, the way this gospel says it. The moment they recognize Him, He vanishes from their sight. Doesn't that happen to all of us in a moment of prayerful insight? Maybe at times actually receiving the body of Christ, there's a moment of sheer joy, but it slips through our fingers. It passes all too quickly, and it seems we return to ordinary lives where we're downcast or confused or just preoccupied. But thank God for those glimpses, for that moment of recognition, and possibly 
that vanishing point is because we simply can't in this life grasp the fullness of the meaning of the presence of the Son of God in our lives and in our world. But we thank God for the glimpses of that truth. Even as so many of us continue this Eucharistic famine that is truly getting exasperating for so many, let us be reminded that we can and do recognize Him in the breaking of the bread. Look for those moments of insight, that glimpse of joy, that hunger deepening even in these days. Be grateful that we can all together witness His presence again in the breaking of the bread and bread and wine becoming His body and blood at His sacrificial altar. And let that hunger grow like the disciples' hearts were burning. Let that desire burst into a flame of love to guide us along the way of our road to Emmaus and continue the journey of discipleship. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> The wisdom of the scriptures reveals God's plan for us. As we journey with Christ, let us pray that his path of life may become clearer each day. For the pastors of the Catholic Church, that they may continue to nourish us with God's word from the scriptures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of our world, that the good news of Christ, the risen Lord, may bring justice to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in the darkness of error and despair, that the scriptures may be explained to them as light and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the sick may feel the healing hand of Christ, and that medical and public health professionals may use the gifts of God as given them to keep our communities safe from disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have been abused, especially as children, may experience Christ's profound love for them and God's healing grace. And may the Holy Spirit guide church leaders as they promote justice and healing for victims and survivors of abuse. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may rise to the fullness of joy in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, our hearts burn within us as we listen to your only begotten Son, accept the prayers of pilgrims on his path of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. In the halls of the heavenly kingdom, are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising, the life of all, has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O <coughs> merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat>
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, it is Sunday Mass, so there are a couple of announcements. Um, first, just to thank you for your continued support financially to our parishes throughout the diocese. If you haven't been able to renew your contributions, we encourage you to do so. We know there are many financial challenges that so many are facing, but our churches are facing them as well. And if we can work together to continue to support the great ministries of the cathedral and all the churches around the diocese, all of our parishes and missions, then we can be strong in this beautiful Catholic faith that we rejoice in during this Easter season. I thank all of you who have gotten into the online giving, maybe that has, you haven't been familiar with before. You can go to the diocesan website and simply go to that with and look for donate and you will be able to give to your local parish. We thank you for that uh, in making the sacrifices that continue to help us to live and to grow as the Catholic family of the Diocese of Tyler. Also, you may have heard that the bishops of the United States have asked us to re consecrate ourselves to Mary, the mother of church, the church. That will happen May 1st, this coming Friday, uh, around the nation with Archbishop Gomez leading it from the Los, Los Angeles at 12 noon Pacific time. Whether you're able to pause for that time or not, which will be two o'clock our time, we certainly will be entering into this re-consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary as mother of the church. And we all pray that she will continue to intercede for us in these challenging days. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.